Hi everybody. Um, yep, I'm back and this time I've just decided, I mean, I'm self, we're all locked in at home now due to this coronavirus. So I just thought, you know what, why not take advantage of this and do <laughs> a few more of these videos. So what I'm going to be doing today is basically talking about Westworld. Um, I've seen the first episode of the third season and I just thought, you know what, why should I probably do this once a week with every episode. I loved so uh, just to give you some, I loved the last two seasons. Um, I loved season one. Um, I watched the original film. <laughs> I'm old enough to have watched the original film uh, when it, well, around the time it came out. So that was great. And I enjoyed it back then. But obviously when, the se when season one came out of Westworld on HBO, that was just awesome. That was absolutely awesome. And I'm one of the few, because it seems like there's a lot of people who don't like season two. I loved season two. And I, I thought season two just built on what season one did. And I know I've been hearing a lot of complaints about, oh, it was, you know, they were just being too too tricky and, you know, they're, they're trying to do too much, being too extra. The thing is, the thing I found about season two is, when you watch it the second time around, it's actually a lot clearer. And I, I guess, because the first time you're watching it, you try to work it out, actually trying to, you're trying to focus on the, on the, on the episodes you're watching, at the same time, your, your brain tries to work out, hang on, does this line up with that? Is this, this what time period are we looking at? Are we in the future or in the past? But when you watch it second time round, it's, it's, it's a lot clearer. I just can't put it beyond that. It's, it's just a lot clearer. And, and the timelines are not even that confusing, confusing at all. The, the only thing you need to, the only thing I found that I had to focus on was the rescue squads. Because in season two, after the... After the um the hosts went a wire at the end of season one, in season two you get people from the outside world come trying to come to rescue the guests. Now that that happens twice. <laughs> There's two a group of guys come to rescue and then another group of guys comes to rescue. And sometimes those are the two line, line, timelines. Some people mix up, but it's it's quite easy to keep them straight second, on the second viewing because one group was led by this guy with big mass, massive handlebar. And the other guy was led, and the other group, which is the later group, was led by, well, anybody who watched Vikings, the guy who played Loki in Vikings, led that group. And and that's the easiest way to distinguish between the two time, time, time zones. Once you get that, I find it very straightforward. Well, not straightforward, uh, like many things, but it, it, a lot easier to, to keep track of. And I just loved it. I, I thought the themes were a lot deeper. I loved the, the, the descent into villainy of um, Dolores. And... I, my my favourite is Maeve. I'm I'm totally team Maeve, and so that's where I, I was coming from in the past two seasons. So I was really excited to to get this new this new season started. Uh, and my overall thoughts of the first episode, I I loved it. I'm a big sci-fi buff. I I love anything sci-fi. I love future, you know, near future sci-fi as well. You know, where the future is not too far ahead of what where we are now. That doesn't seem unbelievable. So I, I loved all of that. And I love seeing the outside world a lot more. And so we, it's, it's a lot filled in. You, you get an idea of what, where te technology is at, what, what the, world, the world is like. And in, in this world, it seems... And part of the core part of this episode is it seems like in the world, we, we, the world we're in now, there's a... I was going to call it a selection process of how you're suitable to roles. So, you're, so there's this AI thing that they've built. I can't remember what it was called, actually. It had a name in the program. Anyway, there's this cop techno company that's got this thing that runs society, basically, and it, tell, it, it, it tells you, oh, Dapo, you're suited to be in a, a cleaner, or you're suited to be working in these industries, and, you you know, that, that place that puts you to where, you know, your, your best role. So that was quite... I, I like that whole idea. I, I loved all the flying cars, the, the, the drive, driverless cars, you know, yeah. Standard thing that we expect... Our expectations now of what we expect in the future is especially what was in here, you know, automated houses and wall to wall, you know, wallpapers that are just basically screens, you know, the, the standard stuff. There's a few more other things that they built on that I quite like. So it's quite a good, um, I, I like the handband thing. I think we're going to go there anyway. This whole handband, I see that coming. So great setup. Now, just to give you, just go, so overall, I like the episode, loved it. Um... Let me take the characters as we meet them. So, obviously, Dol Dolores <laughs> is carrying on for where she left off in the first season. So, she's now she's out in the world. So, there's a few things. There. She's out in the world. 
She's still killing humans. Now she seems to have a target. She's trying to obviously get rich so that you know to help her in, in her plot. And she, in the end of season two, we remember she 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 went into where they stored the memories of all the guests that they've been recording. So in Westworld, they were recording the guests. So she was able to get access to those book, well, the guests' um, data, and she read quite a few, I believe. So what she's doing, she's using that information to track down those guests now in the real world, steal their money, and kill them. And she's mainly targeting the guests that are kind of guests, the guests that when they came to Westworld, raped her or harmed her. So those are the ones she's targeting first. So she, she's, she's doing that. She also seems to be this. So this this AI that's running the outside world, I think she now she she sees that as a kind of a, a rival, or a rival to her, or something that could possibly stop her. So she seems to want to you know, whether own it or destroy it, don't know yet. But she she's targeting the, the, the company that owns it and the, and the executives. So that seems to be what she's doing. Question I have is when she left in season two, and we see it again in in, in this episode. She's got five of those matrices that hold um, the memories of the hosts. Now, she's now in the, in a body that's Dolores' body. In the end of season two, she was in a uh, the body that looked like hey, hell. Hey, hell was the was the uh, was the Charlotte. I think it was the first name Charlotte Hell. She, that's how she escaped, in, in, you know, pretending to be Charlotte Hell in a, in a host body that looked like Charlotte Hell. Now, that body is still walking around here and still acting like Charlotte Hell and trying to get Westworld up and again and running up and down, up and again. My, my question is, if Dolores is in Dolores' body, who's in who's in this Hell body now? Is it another copy of Dolores? I've seen somebody speculate, or is it one of the five balls taken out? Now, it's one of the fireballs taken out. I'm just trying to wonder who are those fireballs. We, we never really were told. I'm going to guess that somehow, prob- probably Teddy is one of them. Um, Who else? What, um, what's this lady that was following her? I, I can't remember her name now. Um, oof, see, I'm telling you about name. She had a, a sidekick, like one of the cow, like Teddy's, um, Teddy's cowboy, cowgirl, who was like, had a kind of an evil type as well. Yeah. So I, I just don't want to, I, I'm trying to understand who, who are these five boys. Now we know for a fact that, um, what's his name? Bernard is also out in the world. Now, <laughs> one, one thing here, it seems like they've blamed the massacre that happened in Westworld, they've blamed it on Bernard. So he's a wanted man. Um, they, they don't know that Bernard is... To, nobody knows Bernard's a host apart from, I guess, Dolores and Cole. But the whole world is hunting for uh, Bernard. So Bernard, as the host, is now hiding somewhere, working in some dead-end job off the grid. But in this program, somebody recognises him from the wanted and he, he, has, he has to go and run again. And he, he also seems to now to be able to switch between good Bernard and bad Bernard. So he, he has this thing where... It's almost like he's hacking himself and he's constantly doing self-diagnostics to make sure that nobody else is hacking him. I mean, in season two, obviously, Ford downloaded himself into him and Ford was basically pulling him around. And I think he's a bit paranoid about that happening again. But then what is this bad person? He's able to switch. When he wants to like survive or attack or fight for survival, he's able to switch himself from his normal Bernard um, personality to this badass uh, personality and I'm not too sure how that works is that some remnant of Ford or is that just him creating a more a host personality with more aggressive with all the aggressive traits pushed up to 100 not too sure sure but that, that's where he was and in the end when he got discovered he he ended up deciding actually you know what I need to go back to Westworld and I'm guessing he's going to rescue Maeve. That's my, that would, that would be my first instinct. Because why else would he go back to Westworld to, to rescue Maeve? I thought maybe he's going to go and get the man in black, but I don't think he would do that. So that, that, that that's um, where he is. Now we, we, we introduced to a new guy, a new character here, played by Aaron Paul from um, um, 
everybody's favourite show. I don't say I don't say Malcolm in the Middle. Not Malcolm in the Middle. Breaking Bad. Um, yeah. So Aaron Paul's here. I like I, I, I like him straight away. He, he's very personable. I, I like the character. He's, well, the character he's playing is basically some ex vet and he's obviously has PTSD. And he's going for counselling, and because of all his issues, he's not very high on the selection process that runs the society. So he only, he's only getting dead end jobs. He was in, um, I think he's working in construction. They kind of, they kind of, there's this classic. I, I, and people in the comments, please tell me about this. I know there's this classic picture where people sit, somebody in construction sit on a, like a, a bar, that's high above in New York. I'm guessing it's New York, and I've seen. Because of there's lots of versions of versions of this. I have I remember one popular one with superheroes in it, but they kind of recreate that pose in here. Because but I've always if anybody knows what this actually the original picture of this is and what it's meant to be. But Aaron Paul is he's working in construction, but he doesn't like the job. He's, he's trying to get better jobs, but the selection process is not favouring him, and they keep on telling him because of his PTSD. I think that he needs to take some, he, has to, he has to have some counselling, and there's some counselling going on in here where he. There's this automated process that's got the voice of his dead friend. I think it's his dead friend who probably died in this incident that gave him PTSD. So he's talking to his dead friend and they're trying to counsel him and he's trying to improve himself, but it's, it's not kind of working. Now, what he does is just to make ends meet, <laughs> there's this app for, oh, I'm going to call it an app for henchmen. <laughs> You've got this app where you could be a henchman for a day and do little jobs, you know, little criminal jobs and that get gets you paid and so he, he uses this app every now and then to you know get some extra cash and this app ends leading him to a job that's going to bring him you know into contact with Dolores and I, I'm not going to spoil beyond that but that's how he is through this app and the activities he does in the that he meets Dolores now just 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 on Dolores and uh, I know there's a lot I, I, I'm definitely I think she's a villain and I'm and I and I like the path of villainy. I know some people don't want to buy that, and a lot of people kicking it. People are upset about where her story has gone. I love it, and I can't. I personally can't wait for Maeve to turn up and kick her butt, and I'm just loving that. But in here, towards the end, Maeve is trying to attack this, trying to um, get some information about this company that runs the AI, that's running society. And in the end, her efforts to infiltrate. This company leads her to having a blood, a blood bath with some of the executives and security when this company kiss a whole shed load of them. Um, but she's hurt in the process and, and, and she meets Aaron where she's hurt. And that's where they end the, the episode. Now, my favourite... So, I, I watched this episode and it ended there and there's no Maeve and, Maeve and I was getting a bit peeved. I, I knew Maeve was in it because I've seen the trailers and I, I've seen... I'm sure she was in the trailer. I think, what's going on? Where's Maeve? You know, she's my favourite character. Don't, don't tell me they left her dead. But then there's this after credits. So if you've not seen it, please, there's after credits. And we see Maeve in the after credits. And she basically seems to be in another park. And this, uh, so the one we, 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 we've seen Westworld. We've seen Samurai. Did we see? Yeah, we've seen Samurai Land. And we've seen Raj. I'm calling it Raj Land in India. So this one seems to be like Nazi Land. So it seems to be set in like World War Two. I think they were in France, and it was during the occupation. So it seems to be like she she she's set in that period, and she seems to be torturing Nazi soldiers, <laughs> which is a, a nice pastime if you can get it. Um, yeah, so that's where so that's where it ends. Now, and I I, I thought, oh God, thank God, I'm so happy that you know she, she's she's in this. And now I saw the trailer for the next episodes, and I'm not gonna. And if you don't want to. So, right. Actually, I'm not going to say anything about the next. I'm not, actually, I'm not going to say anything. But there's there was one scene with from the next week, episode next week where Maeve, where I think somebody's talking to Maeve and telling Maeve that listen, Dolores is out in the real world and she's been there for a few weeks and she's got a great head start, you know. And if we need to stop her, we need to move quickly because she's got a head start. And Maeve just answers, "Good, she's going to need it." <laughs> I love that statement. That was so badass. I mean, my delivery is nothing. I mean, Fandy Newton is killing it. The delivery of what I cheered. Yes! You know, she's going to go kick some Dolores ass. Can't wait. Anyway, that's it for this week's quick recap of Westworld 
season three, episode one. Loved it. I'm so excited. And because we've got a week in between, I can digest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to rewatch the episode again. I know definitely before next week again. Loving it. Any questions in, in the comments below? I love answering Westworld questions. I love theories. I love I love speculations. So let's go for it. Just no spoilers. If you if for some reason, actually, it's no, it's, it's weekly episodes. So by the time I put this out, you can't spoil for me anyway, unless you unless you're looking for unless you use somebody who's worked in an industry and somehow got ahead of um, future episodes. Thank you, and that's it. And see you later. Thank <laughs> you.